In this message, we discuss important guidelines that help establish a good foundation from which we are to pursue the manifestations of the Spirit. A very important teaching in this series. All right, why don't we just rise to our feet and make our declaration this morning, and uh, then we will get into God's Word. We'll spend some time together. So, if you brought your Bible, I just want you to hold your Bible high up in the air. Let's uh, make our declaration loud, bold, and strong. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ. And a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word. And I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please shake hands with those around you. Say hello and greet them. And then you may be seated please. I just want to share two quick testimonies here before we get into God's Word. This came in last Sunday, eve- Sunday evening, and there was a follow-up message on Monday. Uh, during our communion time, uh, last Sunday, while we were all having communion together, uh, there was this, um, this lady who, uh, since the previous Thursday, she had severe pain in her, uh, let's say, in, in, in her sternum area and extending to the side and the back and uh, in her chest and so on. Uh, and uh, during the time we were having communion, she believed God. And we encourage you to do that. You know, when we take part in the communion, we say, you know, we don't say, like, it's not just, okay, you drink the juice, eat the bread. No, it's, it's telling us about our covenant with God. It's telling us about what Jesus has done for us. And this is what she did. Like, while we were taking part in the communion, she saw that, you know, she envisioned how Jesus carried uh, her pain, the pain that she was having since the past week, Thursday. Uh, And uh, she envisioned that, and uh, she believed that, claimed that. And as soon as she ate this, uh, while we were praying, she felt something move in her back and an instant decrease in pain to almost no pain right then in the service. And uh, she said it was completely gone. She sent this message in the evening. And then a follow-up message the next day that she was completely healed. Wonderful. So I want to encourage all of us to do that. When we take communion, don't take it lightly, right? Take it in faith. God can do something powerful at that moment. And here was another one that came into the church app. Uh, There's a lady praying for, uh, she was praying for her father's business for a long time. Uh, She was saying nothing was happening or going well. But after praying and believing that God would work a miracle, he did just that. A few days later, our work came in for her father's business. Praise God for that. Amen. So thanks for sharing these testimonies. I encourage you uh, you to share what God is doing so that we could pass that on to others and encourage and build up faith. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles, please, to John chapter 7. I want to read verses 37 to 39. And uh, then we will... Go forward in what we've been talking about over the last several weeks on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then take time to pray and minister before we close. John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me. As the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. He who believes in me, how many of us here believe in Jesus? Yeah, so he's talking about all of us. He who believes in me, those who believe in me, Jesus said, 
out of his innermost being, out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. Right, we used to sing that old song, there's a river of life flowing out of me. Right? So Jesus said, those who believe in me, out of the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That means you and me. Out of us, there's going to be this flow of living water. Rivers. Huge volume of living water. But what was that? What's, he, what's that about? Verse 39. But this he spoke about the Holy Spirit. So what are these rivers? Is the Holy Spirit flowing out through you and me. So God is in. He wants to get out. He wants to flow out. Amen? And this is for all believers. It's not just for, you know, a few people. For all of us, Jesus' intent is that the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit will flow out of us like rivers. For what purpose? To bless other people. To help others. Amen? So let's say it together. Rivers of living water are flowing out of me. Let's expect that. The presence and the power of the Holy Spirit being released through you to bless other people. Through all of us. And part of that flow of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit through every believer takes place through these gifts of the Holy Right? That's, the, that's why we see in 1 Corinthians 12, these gifts of the Holy Spirit are called the manifestation of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit manifesting Himself. He's saying, hello, I'm here. He's manifesting Himself through the believer, through you. He's making Himself visible. He's giving evidence to His reality. So when people around us question us, you know, I want to see God. I want to, how do you know God is real? Well, God is waiting to manifest Himself through the believer. The manifestation of the Spirit. The presence and the power of the Holy Spirit becoming visible to people. Through these gifts. Amen? So we want to encourage all of us. All of us. These gifts are for us. God has given them to us. He's put them in the church for us. Because through these gifts, the Holy Spirit is releasing those rivers of living water. His presence and power is being released to other people to bless their lives. To meet their needs. To lift them up. Amen? So you and I must not, for lack of a better word, dam up the Holy Spirit inside. No, open up the dam. Let it flow. Let rivers of living water flow out of your being to bless people around you. And one of the ways that you and I are going to do that is through these gifts. Right? So that's why we've been taking time to learn about these gifts and say, okay, how do these gifts operate? How do they flow? How can I develop in these gifts? So last Sunday we talked about developing in these gifts. How to, how you and I can position ourselves so more and more of these manifestations can take place uh, through our lives. Uh, and I just want to quickly uh, review uh, some of those points that we mentioned last Sunday. Uh, we talked about being motivated by love. Uh, we talked about earnestly desiring these gifts. And God, I want these gifts to flow through my life. About stirring up the gifts of God. Praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit. Uh, about staying tuned with the Holy Spirit. Staying calm and rested so that the Spirit of God can move upon us. Uh, about Stepping out boldly on the Holy Spirit's promptings and taking risks and just practicing, just giving ourselves over and over to this. So I want to encourage you and me to desire these gifts wherever you go. You could be sitting in a restaurant. There could be somebody coming in, you know, serving you all the food and everything. But inside you pray. You say, God, uh, is there something I can do for this person? And I can, you know, maybe a word for this person that I can touch him. Impact his life. You enjoy your meal, sure. But inside you, you are desiring, God, please use me to touch this man or woman who is serving us. 
Or you may be in the mall or you may be walking down the street and, you know, spending some time with people. Desire this. In, in every place, desire. Amen? And just imagine if all of us are being used by God to impact lives by the gifts of the Spirit, how powerful that will be. That all over our city, there will be people being touched, small ways, significant ways, through small miracles, through notable miracles. They'll be touched for the kingdom of God. And God is waiting to do that because he said, out of every believer, rivers of living water will flow. Amen? I encourage you to do that. Desire the gifts uh, to minister to people. Now, as we talk about the gifts today, what I want to talk about is proper foundation for the gifts. Because if these gifts are misused or wrongly used, they could hurt people. Unfortunately, in the church, and I say church in, in the body of Christ over the years, We've seen people misuse, abuse. Uh, they go away from just maintaining a good foundation. And then they hurt people. It does a lot of damage. Uh, it brings disrepute to the name of Christ and so on. Uh, not because there's something wrong in the gift. The gift is perfect. The giver of the gift is perfect. But it is us people. We deviate. We go away from, you know, staying on a good foundation. And we do all kinds of wrong things. And then it, it hurts people. And it, it brings a bad name uh, to Jesus and to the church. So in view of that, how, uh, the fact that we have history to look at and, you know, learn from those examples. In view of that, I want to just present to us six important foundational guidelines for us. Don't deviate from these. Stay put in these. While you and I pursue the gifts and pursue the manifestations and pursue the operations of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we want the rivers to flow. God, we want you to use us powerfully. We, you know, and God will begin. We will see more and more of these. Like Mithin was testifying here. Uh, you know, in, a, in, in the life group, these young people are prophesying and saying accurate things. And that's wonderful. And we want to see more of that. That God would do more of that through all of us. And... Uh, as we begin to see more and more expression of the working of the Holy Spirit, here are some things we should never deviate from. These are important foundational uh, guidelines, so to speak, that we must adhere to as we make this journey. And so I want to bring these uh, to us this morning. I'm just, calling, I'm just entitling this message as proper foundation um, uh, for releasing the gift. So the first one I would say is this. Operate out of relationship with the Lord and not based on methods or techniques, right? So you would have uh, heard oh, in this series, we talked about how the Holy Spirit speaks to us, how we have five spirit senses, and the Holy Spirit gives us information in those spirit senses through what you see, hear, feel, uh, and, and, and so on. And, uh, you know, we are describing methods. We are, you know, so to speak, explaining the techniques, but, don't focus on the techniques. Don't focus on the methods. Focus on your relationship with Jesus. Amen? Always grow in your personal relationship with God. How aligned are you to the Lord? How yielded are you to the Lord? How walking in submission? Are you walking in holiness? Are you walking consecrated to Him? Otherwise, we could actually get, we could become expert in the techniques but are weakened in our relationship with Jesus. And that's a dangerous place to be. It's like, and this may be a poor example, you, you know how to use the gun, but you don't know when to use it. <laughs> and you can end up hurting people. Jesus said that in John 15, verse 4 and 5. He said, you know, I'm the wine, you are the branches. Giving us a very vivid picture that the branch that's not connected to the wine is useless. So you've got to stay connected. He who abides in me and I in him, he's going to bring forth much fruit. If you abide in me, you'll bring forth much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. I mean, you and I can say, yeah, of course, I can do a lot of things without Jesus. But all that we do without Jesus, apart from him, outside of him, amounts to nothing in the eyes of God. So we've got to stay connected. That relationship with Jesus is so important. Second guideline I would present to us 
is this, as we, uh, as we grow in the gifts of the Spirit, is to be established in your identity in God. Don't base your identity on your gifts or on your function. Don't base your identity on the gifts operating through your life or on your function or whatever you do. Your identity is that you are a child of God in Jesus and nothing can change that. You are a son of God. You're a daughter of God. Your identity is in Jesus. Who you are in Christ is who you really are. Nothing can change that. The gifts are just God working through you to bless other people. The function he gives you in the church or in the kingdom of God is God just working through you to release his purpose. But your identity is always in Jesus. Amen? Now, how do we get away from that? For example... If you feel that you are loved by God just because you prophesied to somebody today, yeah, God used me to prophesy to somebody, so God really loves me. Hey, the prophecy, prophecy is not for you, it's to bless the other person. You are loved by God whether you prophesied or not. But some of us, we base our love being loved by God based on whether there was an expression of the gift or not. It's a sign of misplaced identity. Oh, today, God worked powerfully through me. People got healed. So I'm really loved by God. No, 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 no. God loved you while you were still a sinner. Amen. So your identity is not based on those gifts. If God uses you, the God, thank you, God. It's a wonderful opportunity that you've used me to bless somebody through these gifts. But I know you love me. Whether those gifts flow, you know, operate through me or not, you still love me. My identity is not based on that. Some of us, we misplace our identity, identity like this. You know, we, want, we need to tell everybody else what God did through us to make ourselves feel good. So we have to tell everybody else, you know. Hey, yesterday I had this, this happened, this happened through me. I, it's all about I, 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 in order to make us feel good. Listen, you've got a problem. If others must hear about you and how God used you in order to make you feel good, you've got a problem. Your identity must be settled in God. I don't care if people hear about me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change who I am. In fact, less people hear about me get better, less trouble, right? <laughs> you read the article on BBC, the, you know, one of the first president of Facebook, I, I think, Sean Spencer, I think. <sighs> you know, he doesn't use his own Facebook account. <laughs> he said, you know, when we were creating Facebook and promoting Facebook, we didn't know what we were doing. Today, looking back, they see, you know, it's really ruined people. Because every time somebody likes you, you get a dopamine shot. Ah, you feel better. If the likes go down, you feel bad. More likes, better. So people are basing their moods on how many likes we have on Facebook. A dangerous society. And sometimes in the church, we are like that. Yeah. So, as a little sidetrack. <laughs> it wasn't planned. So, don't base your identity on the manifestations of God. Your identity is on who you are in Jesus. That's it. If God uses you, thank God. Understand the difference between value and and function. You are valuable to God. Your function is an opportunity to serve. Your function does not define or describe your value. If that's settled in your mind, you, it's no problem for you to take the broom and sweep the floor. That's just a function. That's not your value. 
Your value is on the cross. Jesus paid his life, gave his life for me. That's my value. Sweeping the floor is a temporary function I'm doing. Doesn't matter to me. There's a difference between value and function. Amen? So your identity is always in God. Be settled in it. Don't base your identity on the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestations. Thank God for it. Just give God the glory. Keep moving on. Just be happy that people are blessed, people are served, and people are helped. And don't base your identity on that. Number three is this. Demonstrate Christ-like character. We know the scripture in Ephesians 4.15 that we are to grow up in all things to be like Christ. So while we are pursuing the gifts and while we are pursuing miracles and while we want to meet the needs of people through healings and miracles and demonstrations of power, which is good, which is what helps people experience and encounter Jesus, all that is good. Don't forget your character is also important. I like what one preacher said. He said, serve gifts with fruit. Serve the gifts of the Holy Spirit with the fruit of the Spirit. With love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, goodness, temperance, faith. So while these things are happening, also walk in love. Amen. Your character gives you credibility. If your character is suspect, then the manifestation of the Spirit will also become suspect. If people think you're, you know... Your, sus your, su your suspect character, you may give an accurate word of knowledge and they'll think, oh no, he looked it up on Facebook. That's what's going through their minds. Because they question your character. But if your character is something that they trust, then they will receive the expressions of the Spirit of God through your life. They'll be able to receive it. They'll be able to be edified through it. Your character is what gives you access in, in, before people. It gives you liberty to work with people. They will listen to you if they trust you. They will desire for you to minister to them if they trust you. So your character is very important. Guard your heart, your motives. Let it be always to glorify Jesus. God through every expression of the Spirit, it's simply to glorify Jesus. Not, I don't want any credit for this. It's to glorify Christ. And a very important thing is don't play on people's emotions. You know, sometimes you find preachers funny how they play on people's emotions, right? So he'll stare at you as though he's seeing everything in your life. You think, oh God, what are you revealing to him? <laughs> Actually, nothing. <laughs> But he's playing on your emotions by his stage mannerisms. That's all he's doing. So don't do those kinds of things. Don't play on people's emotions. Uh, don't make false claims and exaggerations and all of that. Just keep it simple. Be like Jesus. How would Jesus minister? He would do it in love. He would do it in compassion. He would do it in humility. He would do it, do it to lift up the other person. Even if it was a difficult situation, he would do it that way. So maintain that. The fourth one, foundation, as we pursue the power of God, supernatural manifestations and so on, is to maintain accurate doctrine and be open to correction, stay teachable. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, he said, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, that is the teaching. In other words, watch over your life and watch over what you teach. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Say, Timothy, be careful about your own life and about what you're teaching. Because if you do that, you will protect yourself and you also protect the people who are listening to you. So important. Stay within sound doctrine. Hebrews 13, I like to read this verse, Hebrews 13 verse 9. It says, do not be carried away with various and strange doctrines. For it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. That means, the writer of Hebrews is telling us that these strange and various doctrines is like eating bad food. You're going to get stomach upset and worse. It's going to harm you. It's not going to do you any good. Now, here's the problem. 
when God starts using somebody powerfully, they are seeing healings happen to them. They are able to give words of prophecy, accurate words of knowledge and all of that. At some point, for some reason, they begin to think that they are answerable to nobody. They begin to think they are above the Bible. That they are not subject to the word of God. That happens. Then nobody can question them. Nobody can tell them that what they are doing is wrong. Nothing. That's dangerous. Don't let that happen to you. If God is using you powerfully, wonderful. But you must stay submitted to his word. The word of God is final authority in your life and mine. Can't deviate from that. Amen. God may use you wonderfully to give accurate words of prophecy, words of knowledge, this, that, whatever. Wonderful. But you still say submitted to the word of God. Don't run after strange doctrines, strange things. Verse making up strange things. They're going to hurt you. It's like eating bad foods. It's going to hurt you. Unfortunately, to the history of the Christian church, we've seen this happen over and over again. It's not something new. We have enough and more examples in the history of the church where these things have happened. And I'll mention a couple of names, not because I want to discredit any of them. I just want to say, hey, these, these things have happened. Let's learn from past mistakes and not repeat them. John Alexander Dovey was one of the forerunners of the healing ministry. And God used him powerfully, powerfully in the healing ministry. People were healed of all kinds of sicknesses, diseases. And, uh, and uh, the ministry, his ministry grew so big, powerful. Uh, eventually he went in and established a city, Zion City in Illinois, the state of Illinois. He established a city. Can you imagine an evangelist, the founder of a city? That was John Alexander Dovey in his day. So powerful. So he established Zion City. Uh, his intent was to have a city where there will be no sick person. And of course, in a established city, there's a lot of real estate work. You're setting up, you know, various townships, this, that's a lot of stuff, a lot of money, all this happening. And then all of this, suddenly, he proclaimed himself to be Elijah the prophet. <laughs> what is happening? He crossed over from being a man of God to becoming delusional. Just thinking himself of being something he's not. But you know, by the time he did that, everything collapsed. The whole city went bankrupt. Everything. It made a mess of it. And the latter end was so painful, so shameful. But God used him in the early days. So powerfully. But something shifted. Another person comes, comes to mind is William Burnham. Again, he was a great prophet of God. And he, he was actually an uneducated man. A boy. God raised him up as a mighty prophet. And, and uh, in his meetings, again, during those, uh, the, the, the healing revivals, he would call people out by name and give them their address and where they've come from, how they travel, what is their condition. Now remember, these days, those were days, no Facebook, no WhatsApp, no chance of finding any information. So it had to be God. That's how powerful God was using him. But as God began to use him, he came into a place where he was answerable to nobody. And then he started teaching error. One of his first moves was away from the Trinitarian doctrine of the Bible to a Jesus-only teaching. But it's a big shift. The God of the Bible is a Trinitarian God, a triune God. God the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. But he shifted away from that. And then he began to talk about all kinds of strange things about end times and prophecies. And it was a big mess. He died prematurely. Uh, but the impact of what he did still goes on today. So be careful. As God uses you, Always be answerable to the word of God. You cannot deviate from sound doctrine. The word of God. And so, 
in order to make sure we stay aligned, it's important for us to be answerable to each other. Be teachable. I like what David said. You know, David was a man after God's own heart. Here's what he said in Psalm 141 verse 5. Let the righteous slap me, strike me. It shall be a kindness. Let him rebuke me, it shall be as excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. For still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. So David is saying, let a righteous person, let him strike me. I will look at it as kindness. Let him rebuke me. It's going to be excellent oil, bringing healing and refreshing to me. Amen. So we got to put, position ourselves that way. That there will be people who will be able to speak to us. And uh, righteous people, of course, godly people will be able to correct us. So one of the things that we're doing in our city is to get pastors together. And we've completed four years of doing that. Uh, once a month, we, you know, of course, it's only a small group that gets together, maybe over 40, 50 people on an average. But we invite 900 people in the city. 900 pastors and Christian leaders, we say, come. So it goes to everyone across all denominations. We invite them. Now, not everyone is coming yet, but, but the point is we need to sit down together so that we will be answerable to each other. We talk, we discuss. So I am willing to listen from other men of God. Sit down at the table with them. Talk. That's important. We need to have older men of God. Give them, have the relationship so that if there be a need, they can speak into our lives and say, Ashish, watch that. But that can only come out of relationship. Amen. And when we don't have relationship, we are answerable to nobody. So, be willing to receive correction. Submit yourself to the word of God. Amen. Desire God to use you powerfully. Desire God to work through you. But be answerable to the word of God and to people around you so that we can stay, they can help us stay on track. Just two more points, we close. Number five is develop self-restraint. One of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 we see is self-control or the ability to keep my own impulses submitted to the Holy Spirit. That's very important. Because while we are desiring for God to work through us, we are desiring for manifestations, we may have our own fleshly desires. We may have our own eagerness. Sometimes this, our zeal gets the better of us. Our enthusiasm gets the better of us. But that's when we need to have self-restraint. Be submitted to the Holy Spirit. So we can cut off what is fleshly, what is impulsive, and release what is pure, what is genuine from the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's important. To have self-restraint. I mean, simple example. You see a guy coming in with torn jeans and, you know, he doesn't look like he's had baths for a few days. What do you want to prophesy? You want to prophesy the judgment of God on him. <laughs> you know, go and have a bath quick. You know, <laughs> That's your natural impulse. So, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Holy Spirit may say, I have a great plan for his life. I'm going to work, do a work in him to change him and position him in a place where he's going to have great influence. That may be what the Holy Spirit is saying. Our natural impulse is different because we judge after the way we see and hear. So you need to have self-restraint. Hold back your own in impulse. Listen to the Spirit of God. Amen? And that's something we must develop. Self-restraint. Be submitted to the Holy Spirit. Last one is to grow within a good local church community. This is so important for you and me. Stay around people. I would encourage you in the gifts. Stay around people who would uh, help you nurture these gifts. Life groups are important. Being in a church where, you're, where you hear the word of God, where you're taught, you train, 
uh, to grow in these gifts is important. So stay around that and be committed to a, a good local church community. You know, the body of Christ is pictured as a body, as a family, as an army. A body has many parts to it. An army has many soldiers. A family has many members. So that's what we are. We have to be that community where we encourage each other, develop each other. But we need to be part of that. I like what Isaiah 65 verse 8 says. The new wine is found in the cluster, a cluster of grapes. And God is saying, you know, that's the way I will deal with my people. If you want wine or grape juice, you, you don't take a single grape. You take the cluster. Got to have a cluster to produce the wine. It's just a picture of God's people. So we are like that. And through us, as we be in that cluster, God will release the new wine, the presence of his spirit. So stay planted. You know, the believers to be planted, to be rooted, to be established. And also walk in right, right relationship with those who are your leaders. So for different areas of ministry, we have different leaders. People are overseeing. And it's important to maintain good relationships. Uh, Hebrews 13 verse 17, I close with this verse. It says, obey those who rule over you and be submissive. For they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief. For that would be unprofitable for you. So we honor those whom God has set over us. Of course, we do it with love and, and grace. It's not out of you know, compulsion. It's not out of fear or intimidation. We honor people whom God has set over us so that they can watch over our souls and watch over our lives. So honor the leaders that God has put in your areas of ministry. Honor them. Be planted. Amen? So, while we are pursuing the supernatural, the gifts of God, the gifts of the Spirit, wanting God to use us, here are some basic foundations to keep us all safe. Right? Don't deviate from these things because then it will, we may end up harming others, hurting other people, bringing reproach to the name of Jesus, and we do not want that. We want to stay in the Word. Stay focused. Amen? Next Sunday will be our last message in this series where we will be talking more about flowing with the Holy Spirit. How the anointing of God, the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, some keys there, some simple ways uh, for us to learn how to minister that. We will close this series with that message as we talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So, Let's take some time just to pray. And I just call up our worship team here just to back us. And we're going to take some time just to pray and minister to people. Um, uh, pray for healing. Pray for God to work miracles in our lives. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be the pastor praying for you all the time. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are released through every believer. He said, he who believes in me. Out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That means out of you is going to flow rivers of living water. People can be healed. Any kind of disease, any kind of sickness, God's power can flow through you and heal them and deliver them. So don't, I mean, don't look at the pastor. Of course, we can pray. But here the goal is you want to see every person be what Jesus want them, wants them to be. To be a channel of those rivers of living water. So we're going to take some time just to pray for people, pray and minister to people. All right. I want to pray first of all for those, uh, if you've got a problem in your ankle, I don't know, maybe it's your left ankle or some ankle that you've injured, there's a pain, there's hurt there, maybe you've had surgery done, you may have some implants put in there. Uh, if you have that kind of a situation, if you don't mind, just stand up where you are. I'm going to have people pray with you. Uh, just stand up where you are. If you've got a problem with your ankle, uh, it's maybe an injury, and you may have had surgery also done on it. All right, so we're going to pray for these people. And uh, as we pray for them, right, uh, you are going to pray. I'm going to pray from here, but you're going to pray for them. Re expect rivers of living water to flow through you to bless them, okay? And then we're going to check. We're going to see, okay, has, has that ankle improved, right? 
Now, here's the amazing thing. We hear testimonies of implants disappearing. I mean, the metal implants just disappear. God just takes it off and turns it into bone or he just removes it completely. They may have screws put in there. Those screws disappear and they receive complete mobility with their ankle. Whatever has happened, God is able to do it. Amen? Amen. And release them from complete pain in those ankles. So, uh, would some of you just stand up, go next to these people, uh, preferably male to male, uh, lady to lady, man to man, just go, please stand up with them and just say, you know, what can I pray? I mean, where, where, where do I target my prayer? Just come on. All of us are going to do this, okay? Uh, just go lady to lady, man to man, one or two of you surround these people. Just stand with them, pray with them, okay? And we're going to pray and we're going to just see what God does right now, right now. We're expecting the pain in their ankle to leave. We're expecting their ankle to be healed right now in this place. The power of God to flow to them. So go ahead, ask them what to pray about and then you start praying. Right? Just pray. Say, in Jesus' name, I command the ankle to be healed. I command the injury to go, I mean, the pain, whatever the effect of that injury to be healed. Come on, just pray with them right now. And in a few moments, we're going to ask them to check. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are the body of Christ. And you said rivers of living water will flow. Rivers of living water will flow through your people. So right here and now, let the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit be released into these ankle areas, bringing healing. Whatever injury, whatever cause for that pain, I command healing right now. In the name of Jesus, bones be healed. If there are implants, God, let them miraculously disappear and let complete mobility be restored in the name of Jesus right now. Let the healing power of Jesus flow through their ankle right now. Right now. We thank you, oh God. Thank you. Now, as, you, as they are praying for you, I want you to start moving your ankle, start checking. Seeing, see, just check. Do something that would previously cause you pain or maybe you couldn't move your ankle in a certain direction. Try to move it that way. Try to do something you couldn't do just to check if the healing has happened right now. If it's progressive, it's okay. But if something has happened right now, we like to know. We like to see what God has done. So go ahead and just check. Just check. Lord, we pray for your healing part of flow. Right? And if you can feel something different, you say, look, I'm able to recognize something has happened to my ankle. There's healing there. And I just want you to raise your hand. Just check. All right. Everyone check right now. Check right now. And just raise your hand. If you say like, I feel something's happened. I feel better. I feel the pain gone. I can move my ankle somewhere. Just put your hand out. And we want to be honest. Okay. If something's happened right now, put your hand down. Anyone here? You've been prayed for. You feel something happened right now. You put your hand up. Something's happened to you right now. If nothing's happened, don't worry. Okay. It can happen during the course of the afternoon, the evening, whatever. But if something's happened right now, just put your hand up. And did something happen to you? Okay, good. God bless you. Feel complete pain gone. Partially half of it is gone. Wonderful. Okay, anybody else? What do you feel? Thank God for that. What do you feel? Partially gone. Feeling partially better. Okay. You feel God's power moving through your leg? Okay, okay, okay. All right, anyone else? Okay, God bless you. You may be seated. And we've prayed for you. Now you go home, you check, you know, take your time, you check. But thank God for the improvements we've seen right away. Amen? Thank God for that. And we want to press in. We say, you know, what I'm praying for? Say, like, God, we want to see amazing miracles. We want to see notable, notable miracles. We want to see blind eyes open. We want to see deaf ears here. We want to see the lame walk. We want to see people who have been born with deformities. We want to see them heal. We want to see incurable diseases healed. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's what we want. That's God's power. And we want to get there. But let's press in and, and build up our faith. And say, God, we want to see those things. Because that's what Jesus would do if he was here. Amen. Jesus wouldn't say, oh, guys, you should have shown up when I was in Nazareth. I would have healed you then. 
But today, you know, my doctrine has changed. No. The Bible says Jesus is the same yes. yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. Amen. The same Jesus. Same Jesus is who we believe in. And that's what we must expect. Jesus, we want you to do those same kinds of miracles. You did then through each of us. Through each of us. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. I'm going to pray from here right now for all of us. So if you have a condition in your body, you want God to heal, deliver. I'm going to pray a simple prayer. And I believe uh, God's Holy Spirit will touch you right where you are. And you expect God's healing power. I will take authority over certain spirits. It's not that you are demon possessed or anything. It's just that sometimes evil spirits cause problems. So you got to address them. Okay. Uh, there are spirits of infirmity that cause problems. And some of these conditions are spiritual in nature. So I will take authority with them. I'm not angry with anyone here. <laughs> it's just that we got to deal with the root of the problem. And so you just pray with me and, and, and receive God's healing, God's power in your life. And uh, you can testify when you uh, see have it evidence for that. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Jesus. You are here. And Lord, I pray over every person here, God, even those watching or those who may be listening online later. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every work of the devil. Devil, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus and I break your work. I break your efforts. I break everything you're doing in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I take authority over sicknesses and diseases, every spirit of infirmity, spirit of arthritis, every foul spirit that's causing problems in the breathing, in the lungs, I take authority over you. I, every spirit of pain, every spirit that is causing continuous pain, nagging pain, I take authority over you and I command you unclean spirits, you foul spirits to leave in Jesus name. I break the yoke of every sickness and disease. I take authority of our spirits of profanity, of, of uncleanness. I take authority of spirits of wickedness that are holding people in bondage to immoral activities, to addictive behaviors. In Jesus' name, I rebuke those spirits. I release God's people from those things. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. From things that hold you in bondage. Take authority over oppressive spirits, tormenting spirits that are causing trouble in the mind, in their emotions. You spirits of torment, you spirits of oppression, I rebuke you. I command you to release the minds of people in the name of Jesus. Stop those tormenting, harassing thoughts. Release the minds of people. Let there be the peace of God in their minds in the name of jesus in the name of jesus and god let your healing power flow right now thank you god thank you and lord we ask for your miracle power in people's situations in their life circumstances to bring in financial miracles to bring in provision to bring in business to bring in supply lord we ask for the release of those things in the lives of people, God. Miracles be released. And thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, I want you to go home, check, expect healings, miracles, and then share your story and help us share it with others. Let God, let people know that God is doing things. Uh, in the lives of his people. Amen. I just want to give you two quick updates before we close. Over this year, we have been involved in some construction work. Uh, one is we're completing a church building in Raichur. Not... <laughs> There's a place called Raichur in Karnataka. <laughs> right? There's nothing personal in it. Okay. There's a, we have one of our pastors there. He started a church in one of those villages. So we're completing that work. And also in Baloda Bazar, Chhattisgarh State. Uh, we bought a piece of land at the beginning of the year. The church construction is going on. 
uh, the date that has been given to us is going to be completed by December 25th. They want to open it up for Christmas. Okay. So uh, we will show you pictures once it's all finished. Okay. And now it's no point in saying that. Yeah. So those two construction projects are going on outside of Bangalore. We're helping uh, build those church buildings for those churches there. So people can have a place to meet. Right. And we are also working on finding a place for us. We've been nomads for a while. Right. So we're still looking. Uh, we'll let you know when things become more concrete and see what happens, okay? Different things, uh, we're looking at different opportunities, so let you know. But those two things are happening. Just wanted to keep you informed. Amen? Okay, let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday afternoon and a great week. See you again. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.